Everybody. Welcome to my walkthrough and explanation of Sheepy Time. This is a fast entry level game that is fun and it gives players some really interesting choices to make. There is some press your luck here as well, so be prepared for that. And this has a rondelle, which I think is just awesome. I love games with rondelles, and the theme is just spot on here in this game. Players are the sheep in your dreams, and they will go around and around trying to dodge the nightmare while activating really cool dreams that give you special skills and abilities and bonuses and maybe card draws and who knows what. This game is played over several rounds, and the thing about it is you're not necessarily sure when the game will end because a player will trigger the end of the game once their wink marker which resets every round, crosses into or past the pillow. Now at the beginning of the game, everyone's wink marker starts at zero and everyone's pillow starts at 40. And so that means you need to move that pillow closer and closer. And that's going to be through series of waking up phases and then banking your points. And that's, that, that's like the push your luck mechanism in sheepy time. And I think it's pretty cool. So what is a player going to do on their turn? They have two cards and they will select one of those cards, play it down in front of them and do one of the two options. Now there is one card that has only one option and there are only two of them in a two player game. And so there is the likelihood that you will get that card and not actually have a choice. That hasn't happened to me yet. It's very rare. And so you will most likely have a choice between movement, uh, either a small amount and a large amount, or movement in general. And then you can also catch Z's or gain winks, which are those temporary victory points that you're trying to bank for that particular round. That's kind of the coolest thing about this. Your choice is so simple. You play one card or this card, and on that card you play one of two things. But just that in and of itself gives you enough strategy to move around on this rondelle track to avoid the nightmare. In the opening game, they suggest you play with the uh, Nightmare Wolf, which I would suggest as well. And you add particular cards into the deck, so when you draw cards to return your hand of two at the end of the round, you might draw a Nightmare card, and the Nightmare card activates the Nightmare. And so as you move around on this track, oof, that Nightmare Wolf is moving around as well. And so your job is to avoid being caught by the Nightmare Wolf, uh, and then also once you get to the uh, fence and you jump over the fence, you have the option of escaping and waking up. And that essentially banks the progress you've made for that round. And the great thing about crossing the fence is that you earn five points, five winky points for that. And so that's one reason why you want to escape, but you don't necessarily want to do it on your first time around, maybe your second time around, maybe your third time, who knows? Who knows where the wolf is? Who knows what your cards say? And who knows how many points you've banked so far? So it's up to you. But once you say no, you have to go all the way around again and you have to make it back across the fence so you can escape. Otherwise, you are going to be woken up before you want to and you won't earn as many points. So that is really what's going on on your turn, playing a card, moving your character, and in some cases, you might be able to activate dreams. These tiles over here are dream tiles and they let you do really cool things, but only if you have banked your Z's on them. Now there are temporary Z's and there are permanent Z's. And so obviously if you have a permanent Z on something, that means when you go there, you can activate it and you don't lose any Z's and you uh, just get to do it every time you go there. If it's a temporary Z, you have to discard it. So those are going to go away and you have to replenish them. At the end of every round, everyone's going to be able to play one of these really cool tiles or place Z's out on existing tiles. And so that's how you kind of prepare for next round and really give yourself um, all of these opportunities for great plays in the next round. The other thing is that you can become scared and that means that if the wolf does catch you and you're standing upright as your marker, 
All you do is you lay them down on their side and that means you got scared. Everyone gets a chance to be scared once and then if the wolf catches them a second time, that means that you got nabbed by the wolf. Essentially, he got you. And that pulls you out of your nighttime sleep cycle. It brings you out of the dream. And so you are going to not earn as many points if the wolf catches you as opposed to jumping over the fence and waking up on your own. So for example, let's say I'm sitting here on the seven. The wolf is on the eight, which means that the wolf has moved around the board and it's very likely that the wolf will cross over this fence line and wake everybody up and that's the end of the round. So make sure that you keep your eye out for that wolf and his progress on this track because once he makes one revolution and crosses that fence, everybody's going to get woken up and it's going to lower their uh, amount of victory points banked for that round. So because I know that, I'm going to play a card that says move six spaces. So I will move one, two, three, four, five, six. And if there is a tile here, I can activate it and do what it says. If I have Z's on it, if I have my, my uh, ZZ's marker on it. And then because I crossed that line, the fence line, I can say, I would like to wake up. I'm going to come out of the dream and then I'm going to bank all my points, which is a really good thing. In a two player game, you are going to essentially earn eight pillow movement points if you come in first. If you come in second, you'll move your pillow five spaces closer to the winky mark, which means you're going down from 40. If you get woken up for any reason because the wolf got you or the wolf finished before you, then you're only going to move your pillow three spaces. Now, that seems like it stinks because you can't really get five or eight, which is better, but it's better than nothing. And getting woken up is not the worst thing in the world. I think that this game is from round to round, just very flexible and recoverable. And again, I really like that about this because maybe you come in last, you come in wake up time, right? You don't even get first or second and you're only playing another opponent. You're not out. You know, there are still several rounds you can earn a lot of pillow movement points. The very next round, we are going to put our tokens back at zero. And now our goals are different. I wanna to get to 32, they wanna to get to 35, and that will trigger essentially the end of the game. So as you can see, we're gonna to need to do several rounds of this for us to move those pillows closer and closer to zero, but that's essentially how it functions. I got out because I played my move six spaces card, and that means the wolf didn't get me. And so I'll be set up next round for a really good turn because I've got great progress with my pillow. Let's say I want to play some more. I will play my move one or two spaces or catch a Z. Now I don't want to move two spaces because it will essentially knock me over. It'll, it'll frighten me because if I move into a space with the wolf or the wolf moves into my space, then I will become frightened. And if I'm already frightened, then I will be uh, woken up and I'll get kicked out of the dream. So I'm going to move one space. And again, if there had been one of these really cool tiles there and I had uh, a marker, let's say I have a permanent marker there. It says cool kids club, move your pillow down one space. Well, I'm there, I have a forever marker, which means I get to activate it without having to lose it, and I get to move my pillow down one space in the middle of the game. Now, I haven't escaped yet, but I had a really, really cool dream that night. So then what I'm going to do after I take my turn, play my card, I'm going to draw up. If you ever draw a nightmare card, you have to reveal it immediately and do what it says. In this case, it says the nightmare moves two spaces. Well, the nightmare moves one and two. That means that the nightmare crossed the fence before I did, and then I get kicked out of the dream and I will only earn three pillow wake up points. That's because I was trying to press my luck. I wanted to take one more turn before I crossed over the fence next time. And it was that stinky little two move space that got me. But that's how it goes. Everyone just discards their cards. We shuffle them all back up again. And then we start over the next round. We put that wolf right back there in the center. The game also comes with two other nightmares. There's the bump in the night which is another beginner uh, nightmare card. 
And then an advanced play, if you would like to have a little bit more uh, challenge in your sheepy time, you can play with Sinister Spider. And there are set cards that you shuffle into the deck based on which of the three nightmares you choose to play with. And this game does have a solo play, and it goes two, three, and four players. And so there really is a nice range of the amount of players here, and every game really does take you 30 to 45 minutes to play. It is a light strategy game with cool mechanics like a rondelle, varying dream abilities, and a cool score track where you want your markers to meet, but it's gonna take several rounds for that to happen, and you're never out of it, so don't give up early. Again, this does have some press your luck, which I think can be really fun, um, but just know that those are elements in this game and that you can have a really great time with Sheepy Time. Go! My favorite thing! <laughs> Favorite thing. Brrr.